Hello, my name is Annabel Harsing and I'm a professor, research mentor and staff development lead at Middlesex University London. Welcome to this presentation on improving your research profile, reputation and impact. This presentation consists of eight sections that can be watched as freestanding videos or as part of a long playlist. This is the fourth part of the eight part presentation in which we will look at the Publish or Perish software. Now, the first three sessions of this presentation have provided you with the background on research profiles, reputation, impact and the various data sources and metrics. If you are unfamiliar with any of these topics, you might want to have a quick look at them. This session will be quite short and very practical and will introduce you to the Publish or Perish software. This will be followed by a session on how to ethically improve your citation impact, the creation of research profiles and the use of social media. And I will finish up with some handy guides for those who are new to this arena. Now, in the previous session, we talked about how different data sources and different metrics lead to very different citation metrics across disciplines and career stages. But how do you actually get access to these data sources and, and how do you calculate these metrics in the first place? Now, that's where Publish or Perish comes in. It's a software program that's an interface to various data sources. Currently, Google Scholar, Google Scholar Profiles, Microsoft Academic, Crossref, PubMed, Semantic Scholar, Scopus and the Web of Science, although the latter only for universities who are subscribing to this. Scopus access is limited to what Scopus offers for free. Publish or Perish was first introduced in 2006 after I applied for promotion to full professor and failed because I hadn't published enough in the top American journals. So in my next application I really wanted to show that despite this my work had had a lot of citation impact. But most of the journals in international business were not included in the web of science at that time. So I really had to rely on Google Scholar, which at that time didn't provide citation metrics. And remember, Google Scholar profiles were not introduced until 2012. So that was the genesis of the Publish or Perish software. And before we go any further, yes, the name was absolutely meant ironically and was chosen for immediate name recognition among academics. It certainly doesn't mean that I support Publish or Perish culture. Now, initially it was pretty much a simple H-index calculator for Google Scholar. But fast forward 15 years and the software is now in its 8th version. It includes access to 8 data sources and it's used by well over a million uh, academics as well as lots of students in nearly every country in the world. Most recently we've seen a tremendous growth in uses by students in Indonesia for instance. It's used by the vast majority of PhD students there and a lot of masters and undergraduate students use it to find literature. Uh, the software is available in a Windows and in a Mac version. Now, Publisher Paris has many different use cases, not only citation analysis pro uh, providing dozens of different uh, metrics, but also um, literature reviews and bibliometrics research. In the screenshot, um, you can see how I've used it to find my own citation metrics in seven different data sources. I haven't searched in PubMed because I don't have any medical publications. So if you look closely, you can see again how Google Scholar provides far more citations and higher H-index type metrics than the other data sources, with Microsoft Academic not far behind. For instance, I have three times as many citations in Google Scholar than I have in Crossref or Scopus, and four times as many as in the Web of Science. But you can also use the software uh, for literature review using the keywords and title fields, and you can restrict your, your uh, search to recent years or to a particular set of journals. As you can see, the abstract of the publication is also shown, so you can use that to assess the relevance of your results. You can even export all the abstracts and do textual analysis if you want. I have used the software for quite a few bibliometric research projects in which I looked at the publications and citation metrics for different disciplines, like the study I discussed in the, in the third part of this presentation. But um, I also did a study on running the REF with bibliometrics only. 
I also use the Publisher Paris software in our own Middlesex University Ref submission to find out, for instance, how many articles Middlesex had published in a specific set of top journals. So the possibilities are endless. And the software program has now been used in more than five and a half thousand publications. Unfortunately, fewer than, than one of four uh, in these articles included a formal citation to the software. Otherwise, my own, my own citation metrics would be much better. Even so, the software is my most published output in the data sources that do include it, which is only Google Scholar and Microsoft Academic. And this illustrates how different types of publications are covered differently in different data sources. So if you want to know more about how the software is used across the world, you can read about that in the link blog post. And for all of these links, if you have access to the slides, you can simply click on them to go to the relevant web page. If you don't, just Google them and maybe add the name of my website, www.harsing.com if needed, and it will be in the first re search results. Now, on a final note, I do cover all the costs of developing, maintaining and offering the software myself. So if there are any rich academics from rich universities listening to this presentation, I always welcome a small donation to help me keep the software free so that it remains accessible to academics and students in less privileged countries. Now, some of you might already be uh, using the online web interfaces for your, your favorite data source, whether that's Google Scholar, Google Scholar Profiles, PubMed, Scopus, Crossref, the Web of Science, or the now defunct Microsoft Academic. If you're happy with that experience, by all means, continue to use them. However, as a freestanding piece of software, Publisher Parish has a number of advantages over these web interfaces. First, you're not locked into one provider being completely dependent on what they offer because with Publisher Parish you have access to multiple data sources from one and the same interface. So you can use uh, run the same query in different data sources to compare and use the best results. Publisher Parish also calculates a much wider range of metrics than the other data sources. Most of the web interfaces are run by commercial companies and they provide only a limited number of, of metrics, typically only uh, publications, citations and sometimes the h-index. And as a user, you typically have little influence about uh, over what they are offering and there's usually little opportunity to provide feedback or, or suggest new features. Publisher Paris is development is developed by academics for academics. We know what type of analysis academics are interested in and, and for what purposes. We also listen to users if they suggest new features and, and hundreds of new features have been added over the last 15 years. Second, web interfaces also have some limitations. Many of them tend to focus on eye candy over content and are therefore typically very, very slow to load. By the time that some of them are fully loaded, I usually have already completed my search in, in Publisher Parish. And web interfaces usually only provide 10 or at most 20 results per page. That means that if you're searching for an academic with hundreds of publications, or if you're doing a literature review where you get hundreds of results, you have to tediously click through page by page by page, making it extremely hard to get a clear overview of your results. Finally, in most of the web interfaces, each search replaces the previous search. Although in some of them you can keep a record of your searches, you cannot usually directly compare them, which is something you can do very, very easily in Publish or Perish. Now, the bottom line is that web interfaces are typically designed for one-off searches, getting you the, the, the top 10 results uh, for an incidental search. It is really difficult for websites to facilitate complex analysis as in addition to everything else, they typically have to ensure accessibility on a multitude of platforms, including really small smartphones. Standalone software allows for more complex features. So here are some of the things you can do in Publish or Perish that are not possible or far more difficult to do in most of the web interfaces. 
first storing, organizing and repeating queries again and again. Second, sorting the results by any field rather than filtering them. Third, selecting or deselecting individual or sets of publications. And finally, flexibly exporting the results and metrics for further analysis in, for instance, Excel on, or statistical programs. All this makes Publish or Perish far more suitable for those wanting to do serious and repeated analysis in academia. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. I've been running a user survey for years with more than 7,000 responses by now. And this is some of the feedback that I recently received. I will give you a few moments to read it. Hope you enjoy that as much as I did. Now, unfortunately, I won't have time in this presentation to demonstrate how uh, the Publisher Parish software works in any detail, uh, beyond giving a few examples on the next slides on how to demonstrate your own research impact. However, there are lots of training resources for the software. First of all, the software has a detailed online manual and a list of frequently asked questions, which you can easily find on my website at the URL below. There are also a few tutorials on my YouTube channel. They are recorded, have been recorded in the sessions that I've been running for PhD students at Middlesex University. But I'm planning to create a lot more official tutorials once I have a bit more time. I've also written two books uh, about the software that are available in hard copy um, and Kindle via Amazon, but also much cheaper as PDF files for my website. The first is available in one volume um, uh, or as three different parts as shown here, and it provides a bit of background about how to do citation analysis and different data sources. Uh, the second is more of a hands-on tutorial with 80 tips. You might also find the presentation that I did at a recent Bibliometrics summer school, how to use the Publish or Perish software effectively useful. Interestingly, some pop users, especially librarians, have started to create video tutorials in their own languages. Um, I have an overview of some 20 of them on my website and one of them, uh, created by a lovely Indonesian librarian, has already clocked up more than 200,000 views in only three months. That's infinitely more than my own video, so it is clear that the software is very popular in that country. Uh, you can find links to all of these resources on the URL listed on this slide. I, I suggest you simply start using the software. And if you have any questions, come to one of the flipped classroom sessions that I will be running at Middlesex University, and I will be more than happy to help. Now, as I said, you can use the Publisher Parish software for a large variety of purposes. However, in this um, presentation, we are focusing on your external research profile and impact. So if you'd like to know more about how your publications are doing in terms of academic impact, that means citations, you can search for your full citation record in Publisher Parish, as I showed on, on the first slide. But that provides you with very little context. So you know, 50 citations is more than 10, but is it a lot or not? Um, so a good way to compare um, your citations is to compare your article with other articles published in the same journal in the same year. Here, I've done that for uh, two of the top journals in my field, Journal of International Business Studies and Journal of World Business, in two of the years that I have published in those journals. And as you can see, uh, my article uh, was the fifth ranked article out of 60 articles published in the first case and the first ranked out of 25 uh, papers in the second case. So if I were going up for promotion right now, I could make a very strong case in terms of citation impact for these two articles. Now, you won't often see articles coming out at the top of the list. Mine certainly don't. but. Um, you can also look at the average number of citations in the journal and in Journal of International Business Studies the average number of citations um, per article was around 144. So if your paper has more than 144 citations that's a very good result. 
in Journal of World Business, the average number of citations was nearly 200, as we were talking here about articles published more than 20 years ago. So again, if your article was cited more than 200 times in that journal, that's a very good result. You can also simply look at where your article ranks. Does it rank above or below the median? Um, if you're making a case uh, for promotion, you can also look at whether your article is in the top 10% or in the top 20%, or if your article is maybe single authored, is it maybe one of the most cited single authored papers? The possibilities are endless. And if you are at Middlesex and you're struggling with this, I'm always happy to, happy to help you. So if you want to know more in general about how to make your case for citation impact, have a look at the blog post that I've listed on this page. Now, you might also be making a case for publications that are published in journals that are maybe not seen as the top journals in your field. I have published plenty of articles in more specialized journals that would be maybe considered second or third tier articles in my field. In that case, showing that your article was outperforming other articles in the same year might not be making such a strong case as, as most articles in lower ranked journals are not that highly cited. So it is much easier to rise to the top. So in that case, maybe you could look at how your article looks uh, ranks over the lifetime of the journal as I've done here. Um, I was able to show that uh, some of my articles were among the most cited in the journal all time. And it is this kind of evidence that really helped me in my promotion application at the University of Melbourne, as the evaluators didn't always recognize or appreciate the articles that I published in. Now, in, that, in this particular case, I've searched with the ISSN instead of the journal name, as the data source that I used here, Crossref, is not very good with journal name searches, but you can search with ISSN as well. Again, if you want to know more about how to make your case for citation impact, have a look at the blog post that I've listed on this page. And if you are going up for internal promotion at Middlesex University, I'm always happy to have a look at your case and provide you with advice on citation metrics before you submit it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this part of the presentation and are excited to try out the Publish or Perish software if you don't know it yet. If you already know the software, I hope you've picked up some additional tips in this presentation. In the next section, we'll look in more detail at how you can improve the chances of your work getting cited. If you're watching this presentation from outside Middlesex University, I wish you all the best in building your research profile, reputation and impact. If you're watching this presentation in preparation for a flipped classroom session at Middlesex University, I very much look forward to seeing you in the session. Do make sure you come prepared with your questions.